your money at skynews.com.au and we'll try to answer your question for you. All right, uh, well, just really jumping into the session today and Julia Lee, Bell Direct, I'll start with you. Uh, I mentioned, of course, it was a pretty weak day across the entire market. What were the key drivers of today's weakness, Julia? Well, the Australian market was always going to come under pressure after we did see that downgrade of Italy by Standard & Poor's by one notches and they are keeping their outlook as negative which means more possible downgrades are possible. Of course the market now watching Moody's, Moody's would have to cut by three notches to, to match Standard & Poor's move overnight and that's expected to come within the month. So if we have a look at the market down by 1% but this is the intraday graph behind me and you can see the real turning point for the market when those losses accelerate was after the RBA minutes were released to the market. The RBA minutes really showing that an interest rate hike is off the cards and really the relationship between interest rates as well as the share market is quite strong. Cutting interest rates seen as a positive for the market and rising interest rates seen as negative and you can just go to China to see an example of that. If we have a look at the Chinese market this is one of the strongest economies in the world. Shanghai Composite the last 52 weeks you can see it's down 13 percent in the year to date as China embarks on a monetary tightening policy and last year it was down 14 percent so despite the strength of the economy of course the direction of interest rates also important so all up the Australian market having a risk off day and that means uh, the growth sectors were sold off the energy the materials the industrial sectors all having a bad day so not a pretty session on the Australian market especially given that we did see positive markets around the region South Korea was high although Japan was playing catch-up so it does look like the Australian market underperformed so, uh a lot of support. I mean, is the traction there still being attributed to investors seeking safe havens? Look, we have seen a little bit of weakness in gold the last couple of sessions, but that's mainly due to the weakness that we have seen in risk assets. It does look like some gold has been liquidated to make room for margin calls that are happening across the globe as well. The gold still has its place not only as a safe haven asset, but as an alternative currency as well. And if you have a look at the typical safe haven currencies of the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc and the US dollar, not only do they have virtually 0% yields, but also intervention in these key currencies. So gold seeing a, a, its status as a safe haven asset and as an alternative currency because you are seeing money printing in terms of the Swiss franc, in terms of uh, the British pound, you're also seeing it in terms of the Japanese yen and uh, the US dollar. So as long as we see those printing presses um, turned on, we are going to continue to see support for gold because while you can print enormous amounts of money, the supply of gold is relatively constant compared to the money printing that is going on. So I think you will see gold still in this secular bull run that we've seen if we have a look at gold prices this is gold prices over the last five years and you can see this very strong run up that we've seen since 2009 in fact in the year to date so far we've seen gold prices rising 25 percent in US dollar terms and the gold ETF in Aussie dollar terms up by 25 percent overnight of course we saw a focus on counterparty risk and this is if we continue to see these kind of concerns we are going to see a run into safe havens such as gold and we heard a report come out from the Financial Times that Siemens had moved uh, 500 million euros from a French bank down to the European Central Bank because of concerns and also it's getting a high interest rate there. Of course, not all industrial companies have the ability to move its money to a central bank, but reports like this are concerning to the market. And we heard the Bank of China also pulling FX swaps from French banks due to concern of, over the European debt problem. So the market really looking at the risks at the moment, and that's going that should be a continued support to gold as well as the continued money printing. Uh, um, more. Um, just still on the corporate front, Julia, we saw Seven Group today make a tilt for national hire in full. What do you make of the takeover offer? Because basically they've been really eyeing off this company for some time, increasing their holding, uh, you know, fairly uh, consistently over a number of years. Look, Seven Group already holds around about a 66% stake in National Hire. If we have a look at National Hire as a business, it is an equipment hire company for the mining uh, area and it's based in Western Australia. So already owns 66%. They've put the offer in at uh, $3, which is a 60% premium on the last traded price yesterday. But that price is going to go up to $3.60 if Seven Group Holdings manages to get more than 75% of the shares it doesn't own, which will take its holdings up to 91.5 
a 5% and then it'll be a compulsory acquisition. So quite attractive for national high shareholders. It means they're getting a 60 to a 90% premium on the last trade of price yesterday. Seven Group Holdings coming out to say, you know, they hold, hold the majority of the stock anyway. So it is a low liquid stock. So it does trade at a discount because there isn't a lot of liquidity in national high. So altogether, national high shareholders have to be pretty happy with that offer. The shares jumping as much as 67% today. Mm.